The Perry Pumas head to North Phoenix to take on the Sandra Day O'Connor Eagles. Perry Pumas Junior Varsity Football is next. Well, the Perry Pumas are getting set to take battle here, trying to even up their 2013 record with the leadership of quarterback Austin Thorne and an offensive front line who had a pretty solid week last week, even though they lost 34-21 at the hands of Campo Verde. But here tonight from Jack Dillard Stadium on the campus of Sandra Day O'Connor High School, a pair of 0-1s, the Perry Pumas and the O'Connor Eagles, it's our APN Encore Gamecast. I'm Jeff Lowry. Thanks for being with us. Game time temperature, 100. Believe it or not, 108 degrees here in early September. Let's take a look at the team captains representing the Perry Pumas and head coach Brian Butson, 64, Connor McCleave. Uh, on the left, of course, uh, shielded by the team captains of O'Connor. 42 is Dylan McCabe, who had a big game last week, as well as Dallas Creel, number six, and the hard-hitting number 26, Tanner Carr. So we're getting ready for football. It's O'Connor and Perry coming up next. 2013 Perry football is brought to you by Largo Photography, the official game day program photographer for the Perry Pumas. Be a part of something special. Puma Encore Gamecast is a great way to promote your business and support Perry football. Become a sponsor. Contact Perry football today at tdclub at phsfb.com. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook where you can watch all the Perry Pumas in 2013. Or check us out on Twitter. And a reminder, as you see Old Glory waving in the wind, next week's game at home against Marcos Denise. Follow the uh, Pumas on our Encore webcast at phsfb.com or at Facebook at phstouchdownclub.com. And week two of the Gridiron campaign is underway. This is a short kick that will bounce and be fielded near the 26 by Yancey, and he's going to be stopped cold almost immediately as he gets it up to the 32-yard line. Good coverage there on special teams. Looked like 29 may have been on the tackle. Michael Jones. So Connor will have it as you look at the defense. Jack O'Hare, 46, one of the anchors. And 62 anchoring the front wall is Nick Soldo. First down and 10. They start from their own 30, make that the 33-yard line. First play from scrimmage in this game, and they run it up the gut and get maybe a yard on the play. And right on cue is Nick Saldo, the sophomore down lineman. Pickup of one brings up a second down and nine. A beautiful but hot day here at Sandra Day O'Connor High School. Opened up about four or five years ago. Majewski back to pass, and he's got a receiver on that far side of the field. Pass is complete to a bruzy. One of the top players on this defense is Connor Passante, third down. They marked him at the third 39-yard line, so it's third down and four. Bad snap. The quarterback trying to run with it, and down he goes. That's a quarterback sack. In on the tackle was Justin Nelson, and he got some help from 56, Nancy Cody Keesler. It's a three and out for O'Connor. Line of scrimmage, the 35-yard line. They lose four on that last play, fourth down and eight. The punter is Jared Yancey. And gets a good one off here all the way to the 30-yard line. And the return belongs to Dallas Creel, and Creel up to the 46-yard line. A 16-yard return after a 25-yard punt. And with 9.39 left to go here in the opening quarter. Good starting field position for quarterback Austin Thorne, the sophomore. Right-handed quarterback. Played a little bit, played a lot in that juniors game last week over at Perry, and he's going for a home run ball to the far side, but it's out of play. Incomplete pass brings up a second down and 10. No score, we are in the first quarter. They'll send Creel in motion from the near side to far. Penalty markers down, and we've got a false start false against start. the Alls. 
They'll settle back to the 41-yard line, and now Thorne and company facing a second and 15. Again, Creel goes in motion, and Austin's going to take off with it. Left side gets the edge and is up to the 47-yard line. Pickup of six yards, still third and long, third and nine coming up here for the Perry Pumas. First quarter action, no score. They will hand off. The running back is Shar, and Van Shar breaks a tackle behind the line of scrimmage and gets it all the way down to the 45. Very close to a first down, and it's going to be fourth down and one. Perry will go for it as they usually do. Trying to convert on a fourth down and one. Austin Thorne may be audibleizing at the line of scrimmage as he works out of the pistol formation. No score, fourth and one, Perry. Van Schaar gets a call, and instead of running towards the gap, he tried to bust it outside, and he got stopped almost immediately. Mike Moody was in on the play, and that'll be a change of downs. 8.39 left to go. It'll be first down and 10, and... O'Connor, who started at their own 33-yard line last time, now will start at their own 47. 8.39 on the clock, no score, first quarter action. Majewski, it's quarterback, and they lose it. It came loose. And fortunately for O'Connor, a heads up, number 71, Bryson O'Neill was in on the play. That'll bring up second down. They lose three on the play. Here's the pass, and it's going to be incomplete. Bring up a third down, third down and 13, working from the 44-yard line inside their own territory. Eight minutes left to go here, first quarter action. Perry nothing, and Sandra Day O'Connor, the Eagles likewise. Pressure on the quarterback, he throws. He had to unload quickly. He felt the footsteps of Bryce Speaker getting in there quickly. And now on fourth down, Kevin Perez will... Be back to receive the ensuing punt from Jared Yancey, and he puts a good kick into this one. It's going to be fielded back at the 26-yard line, and here he goes racing over to the far side and a sensational open field tackle by the punter, Jared Yancey. 31-yard punt, 7.36 left to play here. First quarter action, first and 10. So Perry has started at their own 46 and now at their own 36. They'll keep it on the ground. Here's the end around run and there's Passanti. He's one of the players to keep a close eye on and he's all the way up to the Perry 44. Pickup of eight brings up second down and well, long two. Inside handoff it goes, no, it's a fake. And here's Austin Thorne going to work. He is inside Eagles territory and pushed out of bounds near the 35. Move the chains for the Pumas, it's a first down. Well, he marked out of bounds at the 32 after a 24 yard pickup. Working in O'Connor territory and here's a power run to the left side and pretty good containment on the outside to stop the likes of Tyler Corson. Second down. So no gain on the play, second down and 10 for the Perry Pumas. No score, we're in the first. Thorne back to pass with time and protection and the throw slightly high and dropped by Vossler incomplete. And it's gonna bring up a third down. Third down and 10. And Van Schaar across the O'Connor 25. Uh, excuse me, check that. Tyler Corson gets the carry. And I'll leave him in a fourth and Correct. two situation. Fourth and two. So fourth down and two. Crowd starts to cheer on their home team Eagles who come out in those pretty sharp uniforms. Here's the handoff and they run almost the same play they did on fourth and one on their previous possession, and they are denied here again. So O'Connor will take over on downs. They got 5.56 left to go. First quarter action, and we are scoreless from O'Connor High School in North North Phoenix. Happy Valley Road and about 35th Avenue. Out of shotgun, working from the 25. Here's Williams. He will hand off and getting maybe two on the play after a great defensive play there by Nick Saldo. There's the big running back, Jared Yancey. Gain of two brings up second down and eight from the 27-yard line. Second down, 
Majewski in trouble. And he gets away from a couple, but not away from Jack O'Hare, who wraps him up for the quarterback sack. So they'll mark the ball at the 24-yard line, and now looking at about a third and 13. Big play here for Majewski and the O'Connor Eagles. Three-man front. They break through. Good pressure by Keesler. He's able to dump the pass off. And coming back towards the play was the Nick Saldo, the initial the tackler on that play. As he'll be marked down near the 33. A pickup of nine yards, but it's going to leave him a good three-yard shy of a first down. So the punting unit is out. Ball resting at the O'Connor 32. Yancey boots one to the 40. And the return belongs to Creel, and he's up to the 46. First and 10 from their own 46 with 325 left to go here in the first. That was a 28-yard punt. A six-yard return for the Pumas. And now in a quarterback is Alec, Alex Patterson. Everybody on this Perry roster, all sophomores. And Patterson to throw, and it's intercepted near the 34-yard line, and that is Brett Stevens. He'll return it to midfield, a 16-yard interception return for Brett Stevens. And Sandra Day O'Connor will take over with 3.15 left to play here, first down and 10. And the first time they are inside Perry territory at the 48. So an 18-yard return. Scott Craddock is the head coach of the Sandra Day O'Connor team, assisted by Garrett Lee, Ryan Caldwell, and Mark Shelby. First down and 10 from the 48-yard line. And good Perry containment on that short side of the field. They make the stop on Moody. Great job over there. 26, Tanner Carr, one of the best. Second down and nine. Pitch out, running right, and good containment again. Negative yardage play turned in by Cody Keesler. So Brian Butson awfully happy with his defense. He is assisted by Cody Hatch, Brad Miner, Coach Camera, and Coach Ryan Patterson. Both teams come in here with a record of 0-1 and now looking at a third and 12. At a shotgun, or maybe the Wildcat, here's a pass as Mike Moody takes the snap, and it's incomplete. So it's a three and out for O'Connor, working right at midfield. Fair caught at the 20. It's a 30-yard punt, no return return by Creel. And with one, 24 left to go here. We are still scoreless. A slow start here for the Perry offense. Let's see if Patterson can march them downfield. Working from their own 20-yard line, first down and 10. Van Schaar on the outside, and he's across the 25, and he'll be brought down near the 26-yard line. A pickup of close to six yards, make it seven for Van Schaar. Casey Van Schaar, very talented player, over 100 yards rushing last week. Patterson takes a snap out of the pistol, gives it back to Van Schaar, and I think he got enough for the first down if that that, uh, line judge over there is in the right position. And a gain of three, first and 10 from their own 30-yard line. We're under a minute left to play here. First quarter action, Patterson eyeing over the defense. They'll send one man in the motion, that's Fias. And the call goes back to the well, as I would call him, and Casey Van Schaar. Pick up of a yard on the play, second and nine. And that is the end of the first period of play. We are scoreless from O'Connor High School. This is APN Sports. Exciting 2013 Perry Puma football is brought to you by Largo Photography, your high school senior portrait artist. Visit them at LargoPhotography.com. Be a part of something special. Puma Encore Gamecast is a great way to promote your business and support Perry football. Become a sponsor. Contact Perry football today at tdclub at phsfb.com. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook where you can watch all the Perry Pumas in 2013 or check us out on Twitter. Well, we got a pretty good pitcher's duel here from the stadium as Perry takes on the O'Connor High School team. Back to live action here on APN Sports. 
When play resumes, second down and eight from their own 32-yard line. And the quarterback is Alex Patterson, the second quarterback used. He's going to run the quarterback option. The late pitch goes to Fias. Fias up across midfield. He is inside O'Connor territory where he will be wrapped up right around the 38-yard line. 30-yard run for Dallas Fias. Or, I'm sorry, Price Fias. And it's going to be first down and 10. Here's Alex rolling out and on the run with a perfect pass to Dallas Creel. And Creel is all the way down to the 31-yard line. A gain of seven brings up second down. This drive started all the way back at the Perry 20-yard line. They will hand off Van Schaar right side, off tackle right. He's inside the 15 and will be wrapped up somewhere around the 13-yard line. An 18-yard pickup for Casey Van Schaar. First down and 10, Patterson. Fakes the inside handoff and runs it straight up the middle. And he's going to make his way close to the seven-yard line. Gain of about six on the play, second and four. Second down and four from the seven. Patterson out of the pistol formation. Van Schaar behind him. Picks up the block, the throw to O'Hare, and it's off his fingertips and nearly picked off by one of the top athletes on the field, Terry Griggs, Jr., number four. So now it's third down and four. Perry is 0 for 2 in fourth down situations here today. And now Patterson trying to run that option, and he's going to be stopped right at the six-yard line. Big, strong defense led by Chris Gill. So fourth down and three coming up. And the inside handoff, Van Schaar, and he is not going to make it. 0 for 3 in this game and three possessions for Perry on fourth down conversions. And none bigger than this. And O'Connor really flexing their muscles defensively here. 9.34 left to go in a scoreless tie. But they'll have terrible starting field position at the five-yard line. Perry nothing, O'Connor Eagles likewise. Second quarter action. Looking at first down from their own five yard line. Showing blitz, Perry defense. O'Hare got in there, unabated to the running back and makes a stop after a one yard pickup. Fine defensive play by 46. And he is off and running to what should be a great, great season this year for the linebacker, the Pumas. Second down and nine, working from the six yard line. Majewski handing off and a big hole to the near side. Josh Epson is up to the O'Connor 18 yard line where he's wrapped up by Connor Passante. And of course, moving the chains of first down. A 13 yard pickup, the ball resting at the Eagles 19 yard line. First down and 10. Thomas Majewski, the quarterback, right-handed thrower in his sophomore year, and that one is incomplete. Good pressure Passing again, and that's Jack O'Hare. Actually, Majewski is a junior right-handed throwing quarterback for the O'Connor Eagles. Second down and 10 from the 19. Inside handoff, and trying to break to the outside was the running back only to be stopped cold by Tanner Carr, one of the, uh, probably one of the best fundamental tacklers on the field. Third down coming up after a gain of two, third and eight, and the quarterback in trouble, but able to dump it off. Josh Epson, who has been the workhorse on this drive, and on fourth down, looks like a punting situation. After a gain of about four on that last play, This one's going to land near midfield, picked up at the 45-yard line, 29-yard punt. Creel on a five-yard return. And Perry will have outstanding starting field position with 6.37 left to go here in the first half and a scoreless tie. First down and 10 officially marked at the 
Eagles 46 yard line. Passante goes in motion. He gets the call on the end around, cuts it back up to the 40, dives to the 37. He was hogtied and brought down by number 36, Ernest Atkins, after picking up eight yards on the play, and it's second down and two, working from the 38. Second quarter action. Neither team has scored so far. And back in is Austin Thorne, and he will rifle one to Passante near the 32-yard line. His forward progress gets him close to the 30. About a nine-yard pickup and a first down. So move the chains for the Perry Pumas on offense as they look to put one into the end zone for the first time tonight. Thorne rolling out right, throwing on the run, and I know the feeling on that one. You got a guy open like that and got a little too much air on the ball incomplete to Connor Passante, the intended receiver. So it's second down and 10. Three-step drop. In trouble. Could not unload. And in result, O'Connor comes up with a quarterback sack turned in by Chris Gill, 89. That was a big loss. It puts him back to the 37. And now third and 17, and Austin gets the edge on the right side. Penetrates the O'Connor 30, and he's going to be marked down near the 27-yard line. A pickup of 10 yards on the play, but well short of a first down. And now it's fourth and seven from the 27-yard line of O'Connor. No score, first half, second quarter action. Austin. And he is going to be dropped after a one-yard pickup. A turnover on downs. And with 419 left to go here in the second, can you believe Perry is 0 for 4 on fourth down conversions? Our game time temperature, 104 degrees. Here at Sandra Day O'Connor. Pretty impressive uh, campus here. Kind of a small campus, but nonetheless... O'Connor will get the ball. The snap was dropped by the quarterback. Jack O'Hare got in there with lightning-like swiftness, and Perry has the ball. So Perry converts both teams with one interception, uh, one turnover, one interception, a fumble recovery, and with 4.15 on the clock. Now Perry working from the 20-yard line, and Thorne. Rolling out, in trouble, and he's gonna be dropped on a quarterback sack. 42 got in there, Torin Mahon. A loss of two, 12, second and 12. Thorne, back to pass. Dumps it off, and that's gonna be another negative yardage play. They're gonna lose eight yards on that play as Van Schaar was dropped by Big Moya Williamson, 210 pounder, third and a multitude. Third and 21. Now throw it over the middle, wide open is O'Hare, and you can't tackle that freight train. He is into the end zone. Touchdown, Touchdown Perry. Perry Pumas. And the Pumas lead it six to nothing. A 22 yard pass play, extra point attempt by Corson is good. Remaining so with 256 play, left to play Gilbert here in the Eagles first zero. half, it's Perry, Perry seven. seven. And the host team, O'Connor Eagles, nothing. Well, a good route, just a little post route for O'Con- um, for Jack O'Hare, Jackson O'Hare. And Thorne put it right on the numbers. And they score from 22 yards out to give this game its first points of the contest. So Thomas Majewski, a quarterback. Out of the shotgun, first down, throwing, completing to Griggs at the 40 of Perry. He's still on his feet. He's still battling down to the 25. His pass is complete to Griggs. 30-yard pass play, Majewski to Griggs Jr. And a first down. First and 10, actually marked it at 24, 31 yards officially, and a throw over the middle. And there's O'Hare again, an outstanding two-way player. Well, I'll tell you, Jackson is having a huge game here tonight. So now it is second down and 10, working from the Perry 24-yard line. This is uh, the best field position that O'Connor has had all night long. And the pass broken up over the middle, incomplete Tanner Carr. 
And Carr's having a big game. Third down. Trips to the short side of the, or to the far side of the field. Now they got four receivers setting up the screen pass. Nice catch. Getting inside. Molino on the tackle of Josh Epson. That leaves him in a fourth and four situation from the 18. Majewski over the middle. He had a receiver, Jared Yancey, but actually pretty good coverage there. He probably should have lofted that ball. He probably would have had six, but the trajectory of that pass, uh, if, if the ball was not overthrown, it might have been picked off or at least deflected. As you get a look at the offensive line led by Connor McCleave, number 64. Seven nothing lead, Perry Pumas, late stages of the first half. 126 on the clock, and here is Austin going to work, and Austin gets stood up near the 21 yard line after a gain of about four yards on the play. Patterson, long pass play, that ball's gonna be caught. And they do the old flea flicker for the second week in a row. Jonah Gossett, who was in on the catch, and he is all the way up to midfield, and that was a big, big play for this offense. And now looking at first and 10 from the 41-yard line, a 7-0 lead for the Perry Pumas. Austin, back to pass. Pumps a couple of times, throws it a spectacular diving catch. Oh, what a play by Logan Strauss. On a well-thrown ball, and I'll tell you what, it doesn't get much better than that catch. Logan Strauss was sensational. So first and goal to go from the seven-yard line. Here's Thorne, fakes the inside. No, they go to Van Schaar. Van Schaar is inside the five, and he's down to about the two-yard line. Timeout with 33 seconds left to play here in the first half. The team comes back out to the line of scrimmage. Second and goal from the two. Thorne, the quarterback. Jumbo package in the backfield, and they give to Van Schaar, and he is in from two yards out. And the Pumas lead it 13 to nothing. Now the extra point attempt by Tyler Corson. Out of the hold of Austin Thorne, and the kick is good, 14 to nothing. They give some credit to the long snapper on that play, Dylan, uh, check that, Sam O'Hare. Kick is away, fielded, and now dropped near the 21-yard line. Griggs Jr. will pick it up, eludes a tackler back at the 17. He's up to the 25, still on his feet. Slicing his way through the coverage, and he's going to be all the way up to the O'Connor 38-yard line. But a penalty brings him back to about the 11. First down and 10. Keep it on the ground. Good parry defense that time. Led by Molino and 62, Nick Saldo, and that is the end of the first the half. The first half of well, a slow start Four. for the offense, but... Perry scores twice in two possessions and leads at 14-0. 2013 Perry football is brought to you by Largo Photography, the official game day program photographer for the Perry Pumas. Be a part of something special. Puma Encore Gamecast is a great way to promote your business and support Perry football. Become a sponsor. Contact Perry football today at tdclub at phsfb.com. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook where you can watch all the Perry Pumas in 2013 or check us out on Twitter. And the O'Connor Eagles return to the field here at Sandra Day O'Connor High School as we get set to start the second half. It's week two of the Gridiron Campaign. You get a look at number 29, Michael Jones, back to receive the ensuing kick by Jared Yancey. This one's going to be fielded up around the 30, 25 yard line. And not much running room for Dylan McKay, one of the team captains for Coach Brian Butson, who is assisted by Cody Hatch. 
Coach Miner, Coach Canberra, and Coach Ryan Patterson. First down and 10. So Perry with a 14-0 lead. They have scored on their last two possessions. And now Patterson will get the start here in the second half. And quarterback races up to the 35 and spun out round and dropped near the 37-yard line. A good run there. Give up uh, get about th uh, well, they were back at the 29, now up to about the 37. So eight yards, second and two. Fake the inside handoff, run the quarterback option, the late pitch to Friel, and Friel is annihilated at the 40-yard line. Big time hit by Andrew Yancey. And some help from Terry Griggs, Jr. He may have been uh, shaken up on that last play, but it's enough for the first down, gain of three. Now Creel running, trying to get the edge to the far side, and he didn't get much. He got two yards on the play. Outstanding containment by this blue and gold defense. Big 60 was in on the play, all 240 pounds of him. Brett Phillippe. Second down and eight from the 42, and that's going to net the Perry offense five yards. That was an encroachment against the defense. So move them up five, and now it is second and three up to the 47-yard 47, uh, line inside Perry territory. They come out throwing the ball, and it was dropped on that far side incomplete. Logan Strauss, he made probably the catch of the year on APN Sports on that last scoring drive, and he drops the easiest one. Now Van Schar going to work. He's got a first down as he wrapped up near the 40-yard line. 13-yard pickup and a first down. This drive started all the way back at the Perry 29, now working from the O'Connor. 40, Patterson with time, and Creel makes the catch, and he is into the end zone. A 40-yard touchdown pass. The penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. It was against... The O'Connor Eagles, and now the extra point attempt by Connor Corson is good. Out of the hold of Austin Thor, the long snapper, Sam O'Hare. And it's uh, 21 to nothing. And verify that the player information spelling. So Dallas Creel, a big catch. This is Derek Wilson getting set to kick off from the 40. And this one's going to scoot out of bounds. We're going to make him re-kick it. Wilson, wobbly kick again, and again it goes out of bounds near the 28. And that is where O'Connor will take over. First down and 10. Second half action, third quarter. A 21-0 lead for the Perry Pumas. It's junior varsity football on APN GameCast. Timeout on field, timeout. Perry. And Perry's going to call a quick timeout. 9.44 left to go here, third quarter action. Teams back on the field at the line of scrimmage. Looks like they got a new quarterback in there, and he's going to take it himself. May have been running Moody's out of that wildcat. Carrier. That's Mike Moody. Up to the 32, a gain of four. Brings up second down and six. O'Connor has been shut out through two plus quarters in this game and trying to get on the board for the first time, working from their own 32 yard line. They are not running out of the Wildcat. This is Moody coming out throwing. He threw a nice clean ball there, but overshot Terry Griggs Jr. incomplete. Third down. And to the air again with plenty of time, wobbles it up there and incomplete. They'll bring up a fourth down and six. Six back to receive. And back to receive, Dallas Creel. And he's gonna let this one go. It bounced at the 42, but it takes a parry bounce, goes out of bounds near the 46 yard line, make it the 45. So only a 23-yard punt. There is a penalty, a push in the back against penalty Perry, against so it's going to cost him some yards. Back to and back into the ball game is right-handed throwing quarterback Perry. Austin Thor. So with the penalty, Perry moves back first and 10 at their own 36-yard line. 
And Thorne, with the quarterback option, gains a good nine, possibly first down yardage. Gain of nine, nope, second he got down and one. Nine on the play, second and one. Perry leads at 21 nothing. Here's a pass and incomplete over on that far side. Thorne. Third and one. From the 45. Thorne back to pass. Pump fakes, and now lets it air out and incomplete. Looked like Connor was the intended target. And a, a late call, a pass interference call going against O'Connor, so a big break there. Pass interference called against the defense. So a pass interference gives Perry a fresh set of downs, and now from the 40 of the Eagles, first down and 10 for Austin Thorne. He's back to pass. He throws over the middle, and it was dropped. A sliding attempt by Isaac Knight to no avail and complete. It'll bring up a second down and 10. Ball resting at the O'Connor 40-yard line. The offensive line led by Scott Pospisil. Doing a great job here tonight, and look like Tyler Corson gets the carry. And a first down. They mark the ball at the 29, a gain of 11. First down and 10. Offensive line led by Justin Nelson. And this time, big 75 got the better of him. Wade Parkinson, another 240 pounder. Second and 11. And again, the ground attack stays alive. And again, the O'Connor defense comes up large with Justin Yoakum, 34. Third down and 11. Seventh play of the drive, which started back at the Perry 36. Thorne to the air, to the end zone, and up the fingertips incomplete of Cooper Vossler. Now bring up fourth down and 11. They're going to go for it. This is their fifth attempt on fourth down, and here is Corson going to work, and he's got the first down. Well, for the fifth time, they went for it on fourth down. They were 0 for 4 in the first half, but... They pick up a big one there. Gain of 23 yards and a first down. Thorne back to work, takes the snap. Looking over the middle and now offs it into the corner of the end zone, incomplete. As he tried to hook up with Logan Strauss. A little better than halfway through this third period. A 21-0 lead for the Perry Pumas on our APN Sports Encore Gamecast. Connor to roll out. And he will throw to Connor, and Connor's got it. So Austin Thorne to Connor Passante. He'll bring up third down, a gain of about six yards on the play. Third down and four. Inside handoff, and Carson has found the promised land, and it's 27 to nothing. Carson with the carry. So Tyler Corson now in on the extra point out of the thorn hold. And the long snapper O'Hare, Sam O'Hare, and it's 28 to nothing. So the offense has come alive. They have touched the ball. They've had four possessions, and they have scored on each of their last four. 5.08 left to play here in the third quarter. A wobbly kick that's going to be fielded back. At the, no, it will not be fielded. Bobbled by Yancey. In trouble. Gets out of it and gets it up to the 25. An eight-yard return. Initially hit by 17, Zach Grayson. First down and 10. Ball resting at the 25-yard line. Five minutes left to play here in the third. Pressure on the quarterback. Moody throwing and incomplete. And Terry Griggs was wanting a pass interference call, and I don't think you're going to get it on a ball like that. That's one of those 50-50 balls. That's a soccer term, but nonetheless, second down coming up. Back to pass. Moody, pump fakes. Now wants to take off with it, and he's up across the 30 to about the 31-yard line where he is tripped up there defensively by Sam O'Hare, number 50, and now third down. Third and five from the 31, pass over the middle, and in and out of the hands. That ball was stripped away at the last instant by Kevin Perez. 
Great defensive play. That'll bring fourth and five for O'Connor, who trails at 28 to nothing. Creel back to receive the ensuing punt. This is Yancey. Not a bad kick, and it's going to take an O'Connor roll, which, well, I'll tell you what, Cole Rodriguez should not have picked that ball up. So let's see where they officially mark the ball down at with 4.04 left to go here in the third. First down and 10 from the 32. It was a 37-yard punt and probably would have went for about 50 if Rodriguez had let it go. Inside handoff. Perry right now wanting to establish that run game and really eat up some clock. Second down and nine. Gain of a yard on the play from the 34-yard line. 36-yard punt officially. Screen pass near side. The ball was caught, then dropped, and fortunately for Perry out of bounds, but the officials say he did not catch the ball. I don't know about that. I think Perry kind of dodged the bullet there, though the ball went out of bounds anyway. It wouldn't have mattered. So now you're facing a third down and nine from the 34 and make it third down and four from the 39. Encroachment against the defense. Third and four, Patterson, hands off. And now checking into the lineup and picking up the first down as he runs it over the left guard. 48, that's uh, Jalen Gatlin. From the 47, after an eight yard pickup. Patterson, screen pass, McCabe. And McCabe picks up close to three yards on the play. Wrapped up over there by DeShrozier. Wesley DeShrozier, 155 pound defensive back, linebacker, receiver. Patterson to the air on second and tried to hit Bryce Speaker, the tight end, incomplete. So now third down and 10. Six play of the drive. Patterson has time. Now flushed out of the pocket. Throws against his body and hooks up complete the speaker who's all the way down to the 35 and that's a first down. First down and 10. It's a 17 yard pass play. They go back to Gatlin and Gatlin barrels his way up for about close to five yard gain. Gatlin, the ball carrier. Second down, we'll call it second and six from the 31. 28 nothing lead, Perry, third quarter action. Patterson on the quarterback bootleg, fires incomplete. It was off the fingertips of the intended receiver, William Chinchin. So a third and six, again from the 31. Patterson on the option, will he pitch it? He will at the last instant. And McCabe is dropped near the 29. He gained about a yard on the play. That's a great play by Terry Griggs, Jr. Fourth down, fourth and five. Patterson, six time tonight. They're trying to go for it on fourth down and they fail here after starting this drive back at their own 33 yard line. They ate up a lot of clock. And actually the drive will stay alive. Another late call, it is a first down. A pass interference puts Perry at the 14 yard line and now a big old Brahma Bull coming out of the backfield and Gatlin is inside the five. Second and one as we head to the fourth from Jack Dillard Stadium. Exciting 2013 Perry Puma football is brought to you by Largo Photography, your high school senior portrait artist. Visit them at LargoPhotography.com. Be a part of something special. Puma Encore Gamecast is a great way to promote your business and support Perry football. Become a sponsor. Contact Perry football today at tdclub at phsfb.com. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook where you can watch all the Perry Pumas in 2013 or check us out on Twitter. O'Connor Eagles zero. And just a reminder that you can watch all the uh, Perry Puma JV and varsity games here on APN Sports as the temperature has dropped, plummeted to 102 degrees. You get a look at Brian Butson, the head coach of the Perry Pumas. And got to be happy with the scoreboard right now, reading 28 to nothing, a second down 
in about two or three here for the Perry Pumas two. as they try to punch one in again. And Patterson to throw, and it's incomplete. It'll bring up third and three. A reminder that you can watch our games on the Perry Football Touchdown website. We'll give you that in a moment. Hand off, straight up the gut, and that's going to be a tough call for O'Connor's defense as Jalen Gatlin finds the promised lane. Jalen Gatlin, the ball carrier. He goes in. A five-yard run, and just five like that, it's 34 to nothing. Corson in again. He is a perfect four for four in extra point attempts. Make it five for five. So a five-yard run. And Perry is kicking off again. Was that five possessions, five straight touchdowns? And unfortunately for O'Connor and Jerry Yancey, uh, he steps out of bounds after picking up a ball that looked like it was going to go out of bounds. So it's first and 10 from the 13. Pitch out to the near side. Nowhere to go. Now breaking out is Epson. Epson is up to the 22-yard line. Got down by a slew of Perry Pumas, including Casey Van Schaar and Sam O'Hare, 74, having a pretty good game here. Inside handoff, and Perry's defense was all over that one. Not sure who 74 is. We'll have to make that note on our roster next week for sure. All right, now it's third down and two. With 10 minutes and 13 seconds on the clock, both teams with two timeouts. Third and two from right around the 21-yard line. There was movement again and another false start, so third and seven. Now they're back to the 16-yard line. They have not been able to get their offense going all night long. Moody, the quarterback, and he is being blitzed, and he throws complete. Caught near the 22 in the forward progress. Nets the O'Connor Eagles a first down tackle by William Chin Chin, 84 for the Pumas. First down and 10 from the 25. They'll set up the screen and it's incomplete. Recapping some of the scoring, Jack O'Hare, 22 yard pass from Thorne back uh, late stages of the first quarter. They would score again on a two yard, on a run by Van Schaar, two yard touchdown run. As this pass lofted up there, could be picked off and it is. Intercepted, a three-yard interception return. Jonah Gossett comes through for the Perry defense. And they will take over on downs with 9.32 left to play here, leading it 35 to nothing. And they'll take over at the Eagles 46-yard line. Other scores, course in a six-yard touchdown run. A 40-yard pass play, Patterson to Creel. That was uh, at the beginning of the third quarter. And Corson, a six-yard touchdown run, made it 28 to nothing with five minutes to go in the third. And then on Perry's last possession, big Jalen Gatlin barreled one in. He just took on about five defenders, pushed the pile, and scored. And it's 35 nothing, Perry, as Thorne fumbles the exchange and was able to, with those cat-like reflexes, jump on the ball. A loss of three and another quarterback sack. I think that's three or four on Perry quarterbacks here tonight. Second and 13, Gatlin caught in the backfield, and he's going to be stopped right around the 40. So it's going to bring up a third and long here. Third and 13 for the Perry Pumas, who lead it 35 to nothing here in the fourth. Inside of eight minutes left to go, they send one man in motion. Here's Austin, and running it straight up the middle, and he's found some daylight as he slices through the secondary. He's inside the 10 and all the way down to the seven yard line. An impressive run for Austin Thorne. A bruisey end 22 (laughs) yards and a parry first down. And now goal to go from the seven yard line. Thorne working out of the pistol. He moves left. And now finds the end zone with a seven yard run and the Perry Pumas have done it again. 41 to nothing in the blowout. Well, that'll mean a continuous clock here. If they can convert here. 
The extra point is no good. So a 41-0 lead, 7-24 left on the clock. Fourth quarter action, so uh, a good way to bounce back after uh, just a tough loss last week at home against Campo Verde. And, of course, now Perry looking to even their record at 1-1 this year. Again, a reminder, if you want to watch all the games this year, you can go to the uh, Touchdown Club's Facebook page. You can also watch the games at APN Sports Zone. That's APN Sports Zone. I'm out on the field. Time out. On YouTube. Or better yet, why don't you just go to the Perry High School Football.com, PHSFB.com. Here is Epson. And Epson with. The biggest play from scrimmage here tonight by the Perry Pumas, or rather against the Perry Pumas. He's wrapped up there by Ryan Hildreth and a couple of others. And the biggest play from scrimmage for O'Connor tonight. Moody, the quarterback, and he is close to a first down on a quarterback scamper straight up the middle. 77, Kyle Holman has checked into that lineup. For the Pumas, another run here, and a tackle made by Justin Tellez. 23 is checked in, Brett Ward. 82, Dylan Don. Swing pass, great one-handed catch by Epson, and he didn't get very far. It looked like Don was in there on the on the initial hit for the Perry defense. Fourth quarter action, a 41-0 lead for the Perry Pumas. But this game was knotted up at 0-0 right up until, what, uh, about five minutes, what? Well, 2.56, I'm sorry, it was about 2.56 left to play in that second quarter. Here's a pass play to the far side. That ball's going to be picked off. Ryan Hildreth. And a nice return of about nine yards. And Ryan with the interception. That is the third turnover of the day. The third interception thrown by O'Connor. And with 425 left to go, Alex Patterson returns the quarterback. And not much going on there. Good defense by O'Connor. They'll bring up a second down and 13. They lose three from the 25-yard line. Patterson, right-handed throwing quarterback. He's going to keep it himself and tries to run it over left side and may have got back to the, the line of scrimmage, and now it is third down and 14. So after the encroachment call, third and eight. And Perry's going to be close to a first down here as they call on Tanner Carr, a hard hitter on the defensive side, and now getting a couple of opportunities here in late stages to run the ball. They still work out of the pistol. First down and 10, so Carr nets them the first down. Carr gets the call again, breaks a tackle in the backfield. What should have been a negative yardage play, and Tanner continues to turn the legs. He's like a freight train with the ball, and he has just picked up a solid five, maybe six yards on the play. Second and five coming up. False start against the offense. Up front, 55 out there. Connor Underwood, A.J. Fuentes, 54. Keep it on the ground. Again, running straight up the gut. Tanner Carr gains a first down. They'll mark him down at the 46 of O'Connor, first down and 10. McCabe goes in motion, and he gets the call. Gets the edge left side, and 14 yards later, he's got another Perry first down. Clock continues to run. A buck and a half on the clock here at O'Connor High School as Perry on the verge of winning this one. They are marching down the field. Here's the handoff, and just as I say that, here's this O'Connor defense rising to the occasion with Chris Gill making the tackle. Loss of a yard and a half. We'll call it second and 12. Patterson takes a snap, rolls out left. Now the late pitch to Derek Wilson. A lot of new names in there, and Wilson got 
Really leveled there by Tyler Sheary, number 57, a couple of others. And that is it. The ball game is over as the zeros are on the board from Jack Dillard Stadium. A final score tonight. Perry ties their season record at 1-1. One one. They defeat O'Connor 41 to nothing. This has been a presentation of APN Sports, Arizona's leader in sports video coverage. Jeff Lowry saying good night, everybody.